I'm looking. I'm looking. As soon as it hits, it's... oh, <laughs> poor Mark is down there all by himself. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our May A school board meeting. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Mr. Tracy, roll call, please. Mr. Bowden. Mrs. Carillo. Mr. Kramer. Present. Mr. Finnegan. Here. Dr. Garrett. Here. Mr. Kohler. In attendance. Mr. Cronenberg. Here. Dr. McVeigh. Here. And Ms. Parry. Here. Uh, before we move on to the minutes, I just want to say that Mr. Um, Bowden wanted to be here, but he has a book event in Baltimore for his new book uh, called Life Sentence. So he's sorry he can't be here this evening. We do have a famous author on our board. Um, and Ms. Carello is in uh, out of town, so she could not be here this evening too. So they both wanted to make sure I you know, indicated their regrets. We're going to move on to the minutes. <clears throat> the recommended action that the board approve the minutes of the regular meeting of April 10, 2023, and the curriculum and policy committee meetings of April 24, 2023. Do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Dr. McVeigh. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Perry. Any comments or questions or modifications to the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Mr. Tracy, do we have any comments for items that are on the agenda this evening? We do not. Okay, thank you very much. And we do not have a, a Kennett High School Student Council report this evening. So we're gonna move right to the superintendent's update. Dr. Blakey. Thank you and good evening. Um, at this time, I would like to offer a couple of things uh, on the update before we turn it over to Ms. Laws. Uh, this past Wednesday on May 3rd, we had our second annual Demon Night, Demon Day for our kindergartners, our incoming kindergartners coming in. Uh, Ms. Reynolds and uh, her staff, along with Ms. Laws, performed, uh, everybody, it was an outstanding event. We probably had 300 plus families there, uh, students, staff, it was a, a dynamic event. Everybody enjoyed it, and it was a good introduction to Kennett for our, our new incoming students, as I call them, our new baby blues. So uh, that was a highlight of the last week. And I'd also like to make sure that we say happy teacher appreciation, staff appreciation week this week, that we are only as good as our staff and our teachers, and we have outstanding staff and teachers, and that allows us to continue to be an outstanding district. So thank you. And we will see you on Friday where we have a special gift to offer all of our staff. So thank you. And I will turn it over now to Ms. Laws for a few special presentations tonight. Good evening, President Garrett, members of the board, and Dr. Blakey. At the Kennett Consolidated School District, every student, family, staff, alumnus, and partner contributes to the success of our community. In fact, we believe that their individual stories, while undeniably unique, strengthen our community as a whole. So at every board meeting, we tell you at least one such story of strength. And tonight, um, we are pleased to tell not one, not two, but three of those. First, it is my privilege to introduce Kennett High School senior Maria Juarez and Kennett High School junior Victoria Martinez. Both participate in the Technical College High School TCHS Veterinary Science Program. Recently, both also represented KHS and TCHS at the National FFA Convention in Indianapolis, Indiana. For those that do not know FFA, the national organization began as Future Farmers of America, and now it welcomes all who are engaged in the industry of agriculture. This year alone, nearly 70,000 FFA members and their friends attended the national convention. Maria and Victoria are here to tell us a little bit about their experiences. So would you join us up here and, and tell us a little bit about what you did at the, at the convention? Okay.
Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Victoria Martinez. And I'm Maria Juarez. And first of all, I want to thank everyone for letting us um, come here and share our story. We are part of uh, TCHS Vet Science, and part of that, um, we were able to participate in FFA competition, and more specifically, Vet Science. So in Vet Science, in the competition, we had to do a lot of things. We had to do identification for different types of breeds for dogs, cats, cows, um, livestock and surgical tools. We also had to do multiple choice and those multiple choice were all about animal, their how to take care of them and species specific, um, their uh, diseases and husbandry. We also had to do medical math and we had to do a lot of practicums and practicums are basically things that you do in the veterinary field. For example, we had to demonstrate how to open and close a surgical pack, how to administer different types of vaccines and different types of medication, as well as prescribing medication above other things. So, um, well, it was a very nerve-wracking experience, but it was also very exciting. It was world opening. I had um, opportunity that not, not a lot of people were able to have, and I am very grateful that I was able to do it. Uh, not only am I honored that I was able to represent TC Chess, uh, Kennet, and Pennsylvania, it was truly a world a new world experience that I will never forget and I will truly be grateful especially because there were a lot of supporting people there were a lot of people supporting us with kind words and um well just supporting us um, yeah Maria okay Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Maria Katie Juarez Guillen. I am a second year at TCHS Pennox Bridge, and I'm a senior here at Kennett High School. Um, I wanted to first start by thanking everyone here for inviting us and to come and talk about FFA. It was a really um, enjoyful, fun, and an experience that gave us a lot to learn about. Um, and it was an honor to receive the invitation of you to come in here to talk about that. I was really excited when I got the email. Um, so FFA was an op a extraordinary opportunity that I was given. And I am so grateful to Ms. Farwell, our program teacher, for um, preparing us for this, um, for this competition. And to everyone who contributed something to, for us to follow our dreams in the veterinary field. Um, the FFA organization impacted many lives, including mine. Um, being in this competition made me challenge myself to get out of my bubble and to do things that I, would, that I didn't think I would do. Um, like being here and talking in front of all of you, I'm really bad at public speaking skills, but and experiences like those made me see that sometimes I underestimate myself and that I am capable of doing things like that, like um, being in the national team and representing Pennsylvania. That was a huge honor and I am so grateful for that. Um, and bringing the, we got, we brought a silver medal home and Ms. Farwell has, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Ms. Uh, Farwell has uh, a silver plaque on the uh, veterinary program classroom. And it, I'm really proud of that. And our, um, sorry, <laughs> and, uh, and of that, um, what we achieved. In the veterinary science competition, I got fifth out of 54 in regionals. Um, I got fifth again in, this, in states, and we got to do states at Penn State, at the Penn State campus, and we got to stay at the dorms. That was a really cool experience, and I love that. Um, and then we won there as a team, and we got to go to nationals and represent Pennsylvania. And I got 10th there. I, what did you get in nationals? I got fifth. You got fifth? <laughs> um, and, uh, and nationals was the convention was done in Indiana, Indianapolis. And um, 
And this year, I did a wildlife CDE, and I got first in the county in 15 out of 100 that did that competition. That was really cool, learning about all the birds. And there's a lot of uh, different um, competitions that you can do. And I wish I, I would have started sooner so I could have done another competition because it's really fun. But I'm graduating now, so. But there's going to be more that I can involve myself in. Um, and I also got to connect a lot with Victoria. Um, we were the only ones from the Kennett High School, and we were the only Hispanics there. And that was a really different experience being over there. And everywhere I looked at, there was no Hispanics. It was There was a lot of students and no Hispanics in sight, and that was really different to what I'm accustomed to here. And that, um, yeah, that was hard. That was scary over there. But um, it was a nice experience. But I would like to take this opportunity to, to um, try to encourage other students to hear my story so they, um, they're not afraid of putting themselves in competitions like these. And my hope is that and other competitions next year, there will be more Hispanics, and me and Victoria won't be the only Hispanics over there, and I would really love that. And to maybe sh if I share my story, other students will be, um, I don't know, moved by it and try to give it a go, too. Um, because just like the name says, we are the future farmers of America. Um, so from my experience, my message to other students would be to get more involved in stuff like this, to not be afraid of failure, because without it, we wouldn't be able to learn from those experiences and grow as people. Thank you. And one more thing just to close it off. Um, first of all, thank you so much. Um, going to FFA and competing all the way to nationals was a lot of work on all on our part, but we couldn't have done it without your support, without you able, well, without you giving us the opportunity to go to tech and being being able to compete there. Um, we couldn't have done it without you. So thank you so much, and hopefully you continue on supporting us. Thank you. Thank you. And I would like to invite um, both families to come up for a photo um, to officially mark this occasion. So if you wouldn't mind joining us, and then we'll move on to our second superintendent spotlight. Dr. Blakey, would you like to join us? Everyone squeeze together. There's a lot of you in this photo. Very good. Thank you. Okay, I told you we had an action packed night, and I meant it. So thank you both, um, and congratulations to both of you and to your families. Next, I'm going to ask Mrs. Uh, Rebecca Vitri, um, principal at Greenwood Elementary School, to introduce our partners at the Believe and Achieve Foundation, um, and to tell us a little bit about the exciting news that we have from them. Good evening, President Garrett, Board of School Directors, Dr. Blakey. We have some exciting news today. So I wanna share some information regarding the Believe and Achieve Foundation. The Believe and Achieve Foundation provides needs to our children and families in local neighborhoods. They work continuously to educate and inspire youth and their families by providing outreach opportunities and experiential learning. The foundation aims to work, and meet not only the basic needs of children and families, but aims to develop the growth mindset and confidence that will serve them throughout their lives. We are grateful for the opportunity to develop a partnership to support our students within the Kennett Consolidated School, School District. We applied for a grant 
to enhance equitable educational opportunities for our students and to ensure they have access to materials and supplies to support their education and well-being. We want to ensure we're supporting students in accessing special programs which align with the district's mission and vision for all students to provide opportunities and experiences through local programs or presentations. Our goal is to ensure that opportunities and experiences we provide are also connected to curricular standards and content. The opportunity to partner with the Believe and Achieve Foundation to provide these valuable experiences to students while also providing students access to shop at Farm Fresh Market and learn about nutrition in a fun and educational way is one that we are so grateful for. This is an amazing opportunity for our students within Kennett Consolidated School District. I would like to introduce Kara and Kate as they have a special presentation for the Kennett Consolidated School District. Congratulations, Kenneth. Um, my name is Kate McGee. I'm the executive director of the Believe and Achieve Foundation. We are thrilled to start this partnership. Um, you guys have qualified for the BNA Boost, we call it. And the purpose behind the boost is to to take everything, all of the great things that you do each summer and give you the tools to make it better. We want, we want every kid to walk away with a notebook full of things to write about their summer experience. So this summer you guys have qualified for a, a bunch of school supplies, some exciting assemblies, um, and a pop-up farm fresh market that'll arrive at school once a week. Teachers, staff, students will shop. They'll go home with fresh fruits and veggies and um, pantry staples for their family each week along with a lot of other fun things. We hope that this is only the beginning of a wonderful partnership. Um, BNA cur currently works with Westchester School District, Coatesville School Di District, and now Kennett. So congratulations tonight. We're excited to present you with this $10,000 grant. <laughs> Dr. Blakey, would you like to join us for a photo or a member of the board? And Dr. Miller, uh, who's also been instrumental in this as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And last but certainly not least, Mrs. Elizabeth Weaver, principal at New Garden Elementary School, is here to help us introduce our final spotlight, Mrs. Diane Burke. Good evening, President Garrett, esteemed members of the board, and Dr. Blakey, our distinguished superintendent. I am honored to be here tonight to recognize a hero among us. It is my pleasure to speak to you about Diane Burke, one of New Garden's third grade teachers, who demonstrated exceptional bravery and presence of mind during an incident that could have ended differently. As we all know, the PSSAs are a stressful time for students, teachers, and administrators. This is especially true for our young students who are not yet accustomed to the rigors of standardized testing. During one such testing session, a third grade student began choking on a lifesaver. During this situation, Mrs. Burke, our hero, remained calm and acted quickly. Without a second thought, she sprang into action, performing the Heimlich maneuver and dislodging the candy from Kaysen's throat, ultimately saving his life. Mrs. Burke promptly assessed the situation and made sure Kaysen was safe and well taken care of. Her, her, her heroism did not end there. After checking on Kaysen, Mrs. Burke asked to immediately return to her classroom to continue the testing with the rest of her students, her children, without any hesitation. After testing was finished, she once again checked on Kaysen, making sure he was okay. The hugs brought tears to our eyes. 
Mrs. Berg's heroic actions were selfless, courageous, and truly exemplifies the qualities that we look for in our educators. Her composure and quick thinking in a moment of crisis were nothing short of remarkable. And we are so proud to have her as a member of our New Garden family and our entire, entire KCSD community should be very proud. On behalf of the entire faculty, staff, and student body, on this first day of Teacher Appreciation Week, I want to extend my deepest gratitude to you, Mrs. Burke, our outstanding teacher, our hero. Thank you for always going above and beyond every day for all our students, and especially for your bravery, dedication, and unwavering commitment to their well-being. You are an inspiration to us all, and we are lucky to have you as part of our New Garden team. Dr. Blakey, you already know. <laughs> yeah, there, you want to say something? Dad, come in. Go for it. Dad. Oh, sorry. Uh, I can take a picture. I just, wanted to, uh, oh, <laughs> I just wanted to extend my thank you to Mrs. Burt. Um, me and my wife are both healthcare providers. And for her to step in out and just you know, stepping into action right then and there, um, saving our son, I uh, really appreciate that. Um, I just learned tonight that she didn't even, like, I, I thought that teachers were taking, like, uh, basic life-saving courses and things of that nature, whatever, but she just learned from the internet how to do that, you know, reading on her own. Um, so I can't make a suggestion or nothing. I, I'm just a, a parent, but um, it would be lovely just for all the teachers to be able to have those basic life-saving skills to be able to save a situation like this. I appreciate Mr. I try to give her my token of appreciation, you know, personally, and then also went to the school board myself to make sure that she was recognized as well. So Ms. Burt, um, on behalf of the Thomas family, we really appreciate you saving our little boy. Um, thank you so much. <laughs> And that concludes our superintendent spotlights for the month of May. So to the Thomas family, before we leave, we will actually be offering CPR uh, classes to our staff for free. Uh, at the towards the end of the year. It has nothing to do with this. It's just happenstance, but that is one of the options that will be offered at the end of the year. So thank you for your, thank you. Dr. Garrett, if I may. Yes, go ahead. Um, I, I, I want to appreciate Dr. Blakey, your superintendent's report and the stories we've heard tonight. Before we lose all the teachers and, and all the people that are here to support <laughs> Mrs. Burke, I just want to say, wow, what a great start to Teacher Appreciation Week. You are appreciated. You're loved. Thank you very much for being here to support your coworker, and thank you for being a teacher in Kenneth. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cronenberg. You know, I'm, I'm really sorry Victoria and Maria left because um, at the CCIU board meeting, which was held at Pennix Bridge, they were acknowledged um, for their performance and their achievements. So I'm sorry they left because that was really something that was emphasized at the board meeting um, when just last week. So we're going to move on to um, facilities with Mr. Woolhoff. Good evening, Dr. Garrett, Dr. Blakey, members of the board. The facilities report for May 8th is as follows. Over the next few weeks, the civil engineering firm will be conducting soil testing in the back of Greenwood Elementary School in the large field.
The purpose of the test is to, is to determine the soil composition so that this new sewer system can be designed for the new school. We've started to prepare the grounds at the high school and the front of the high school for graduation. Over the last year, Mr. McGuire and I met with all KCSD staff, including our contractors, to review our emergency flip chart response and to gather back fee any feedback from them along with local law enforcement and our EMS partners. This month will be our last training. No, not forever, it was just for this year. Um, we will finalize the updates to the flip chart over the summer and have them printed in both English and in Spanish as and along with placing them on our online platform for staff use, both in English and in Spanish. We are currently working with TriM, our regional security integrator, on initiatives to incorporate both our camera system and our access control system together. In August, we will be having a, we partnered with um, Chester County Safe Schools, local law enforcement, and EMS to have an exercise at the high school for an active response. Once we have more details, we'll share that with you. On May 16th, our in-service day, members of the maintenance team will go through first aid, CPR, and AED training. Some of the members have already been through it. Through the training, um, my goal was to have 100% of my team um, certified. As Dr. Blakey said, it will be offered to all staff members free of charge. Um, on, you know, we'll, we'll be picking up the tab for the training. So that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Warhoff. Any questions on that report? Okay, thank you again. We're going to move to the uh, TCHS CCIU report. And once again, I'm sorry, Victoria Maria, um, left before we could acknowledge them because they were acknowledged at the meeting. The uh, Chester County uh, Board of Directors held its monthly meeting on Wednesday, April 19th at the Technical College High School Penix Bridge campus. I'm going to emphasize one thing um, and really one student. Uh, they had three students who presented that evening, but I'm going to talk about the outstanding uh, student that is one of our students who graduated, Julian um, Stowell. He is a graduate of Kennett Consolidated School District. He spoke to the board. He's a successful participant in the Delaware County Community College HVAC Partnership Program. He's currently employed in the HVAC industry and he expressed his gratitude for the opportunity to participate in the tuition-free high school dual enrollment HVAC training program. And he has a really great opportunity right now, and he is extremely grateful uh, for not only what Kenneth has done or did for him, but what the uh, THS also has done for him. Also, just um, for informational purposes, they, um, the board approved the marketplace budget for $211 million, $11,079. And also, um, I think it's important for us to share that the IU is developing a comprehensive capital projects plan. Um, there are some things that we will be talking about very soon, but they have some pretty high goals for things that they want to accomplish in some of their campuses, as well as some potential uh, growth of programs when it comes to Technical College High Schools. And lastly, the um, next meeting will be held next week, next Wednesday, May 17th, at the Child and Career Development Center in Coastville, PA. That ends my report, and there is no Chester County Schools Authority report. We'll move, um, and there is no Legislative Council report. So we'll go right to curriculum with Ms. Perry. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, the curriculum committee met on April 24th at 6.30. Dr. Collins, Director of Teaching and Learning, and Dr. Miller, Supervisor of Elementary Education, gave the committee a detailed update on the K-8 to math program selection process. Teachers on the K-8 to math committee shared highlights of the iReady math program from their initial pilot. Additionally, the committee reviewed an AP environmental science textbook presented by Mrs. Jester Durante, Supervisor of Secondary Education. Um, just some highlights from the iReady math program, which is, uh, you know, they looked, the committee looked at four programs, Math and Focus 2020, Reveal Mathematics, Illustrative math Mathematics, and iReady. Um, they used district math data and program survey results 
um, and they moved forward with an iReady math mathematics pilot. And after the pilot, the committee collected some general feedback from their prospective teams of teachers at the schools and decided to move forward and recommend this um, for a few reasons. The lessons, they said, go in depth on the PA standards. And the program has already been rated on ed reports and has a good score. Um, the lessons are extremely engaging for students. The teachers were sharing how students had opportunities to work together and to engage in mathemat mathematical discourse. Um, the program emphasizes using academic language. Um, and it also comes with an adaptive online component um, so teachers can receive real-time data on their students to create small groups and be more informed about the students' progress and needs. The lessons include culturally relevant contexts. Um, the committee noted that the materials are inclusive of families in our district, students and families. Um, there's a slide deck provided for teachers for lessons. Um, which, you know, for Teacher Appreciation Week, that's really important. Um, they <laughs> make teachers' lives easier. Um, and there are supplies for centers for various levels of learners. Um, and of course, significantly updated bilingual support that goes beyond just a letter home. Um, students and families have access to tutoring and um, materials in Spanish. Um, and many other languages with iReady. So the next committee meeting is gonna be on May 22nd. We're gonna hear the first part of the balanced scorecard update. And then in July, we'll hear more about student data from the balanced scorecard. All right, that concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Perry. Any questions regarding that report? Okay, we're gonna uh, move on to their we do not have a, a finance committee report. They did not meet. So we'll move right on to policy, Mr. Kohler. Thank you, Dr. Kara. Uh, the policy meeting on April 24th, we discussed two very important policies, two very uh, difficult policies. Uh, the first one was the weapons code. The, the problem with it is uh, we have a zero tolerance policy and it also includes language about replica weapons, right? So. Mrs. Weaver joined the conversation, Dr. Barber joined the conversation, several board members were there, and we recognize that there's a balance. Uh, the balance is you don't want a child bringing a replica weapon into school. It was noted that uh, airsoft is a very popular activity now, and airsoft weapons pride themselves on being indiscernible from a distance from an AR-15 or any other type of pistol, uh, semi-automatic pistols. So. We don't want the children to bring those into school for obvious reasons, for the scare factor, or if law enforcement were to mistake it for an actual weapon. However, that needs to be balanced with a replica weapon is a Nerf gun, a replica weapon. And so on the one hand, we, the committee is going to recommend a policy today. Uh, it's, it's up for presentation in a little bit, but we did discuss having me speak about this a little bit while I'm doing my report. So the points that we made was we need to include replica weapons in the definition because certain toy guns, such as ones used for airsoft, are almost identical in appearance to a real firearm. Uh, however, the need for safety must be balanced with a reasonable policy that would not cause disciplinary action for an obvious toy, such as a Nerf gun or a water pistol. Uh, the board relies upon the administration to implement its policies in a reasonable and fair manner, and we trust the discretion of the superintendent uh, it was noted that the policy includes the following language towards the end of it. Quote, an exception to this policy may be made by the superintendent who shall prescribe special conditions or administrative regulations to be followed. So the, the tail end of that is special conditions or administrative regulations to be followed. Uh, we were hopeful when we get to this policy, we can have a discussion about it. But the recommendation from the committee was that we ask the administration to confer with council and local law enforcement to develop a practical administrative regulation for replica weapons, which will balance the need for safety and to fairly and reasonably apply discipline. 
uh, after that process, we're hopeful that the administration will consider presenting to the board the findings of that. Because it's very important, especially in, in today, there's been several mass shootings in the last few days. Uh, we don't want to see that here, but also we don't want a child to be disciplined for bringing an obvious toy to school. So that was the discussion that we had regarding the uh, weapons. Then we moved on to controlled substances. It was a very, uh, uh, let's say, I don't want to say complicated, but it was a very important meeting. Uh, because same with, there is mandatory requirements and there are uh, non-mandatory requirements as far as violations of the disciplinary code and of the, uh, the education law. There are two portions, section 22, I'm sorry, title 22 PA code section 1021 deals with immediate notification uh, and then type, title 22 PA code 10.22 talks about discretionary notification they reference a certain statute. Uh, that's in the minutes if anybody has insomnia and they want to read uh, Pennsylvania legislature's handiwork. But the, what it comes down to is under those two under those two codes, you are granted discretion what you can report and what you don't have to report. We were very satisfied with the language in the new policy that, uh, th again, the superintendent and the administration working on his behalf have discretion on what can be reported and what can't be reported, noting that there are certain things such as uh, different violations under that title that must be reported. Again, when we come up to that policy, we will potentially have a discussion about it uh, and then just ask that the superintendent be mindful of the discretion that you're granted uh, when those policies are brought about. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kohler. Any questions right now regarding those policies? They will be obviously brought up shortly for approval. All right, moving on right along, there is no communications committee report this evening. And let's go right to personnel with uh, Dr. Barber. <laughs> Good evening, Dr. Carrot, Dr. Blake, and members of the board. This evening, uh, it's my privilege to introduce Ms. Chris Marsala, who is our new Director of Human Resources, who will be joining me this evening for our presentations and including the personnel section. Just to footnote Chris's dedication, she drove 16 hours last night and got in at 3 a.m. and is still here with us from Tuscaloosa, <laughs> correct? Chris, well. Thank you for having me, and I just wanted to say briefly that I'm excited to be here and looking forward to get started. Uh, my first official day will be on June 1st, but you will be able to find me around the office on Mondays. We're doing some transition now, um, so I am looking forward to getting started and working with all of you. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Chris, and we did try and talk her out of it this evening, but she said she wanted to be here, so. <laughs> um, so we appreciate that. Uh, this evening's personnel section for review and approval uh, by the board is in front of you. Uh, we do have one uh, retirement this evening, uh, Mr. Mike Anastas, uh, for your review and consideration. We have some other folks who are requesting uh, leaves of absence. In addition, we have recommendation from employment. Ms. Marsala is there. Um, and you'll see Penn State University and a master's from Villanova University. Uh, we have some support positions uh, we're recommending for approval. We're very excited to have our assistant join us as sh as shortly in the HR office and our teaching and learning department, um, as well as uh, our attendant clerk, attendance clerk at Kennett High School. And then we have three changes of assignment, uh, and I do want to offer congratulations. Don't want to be preemptive too much, but Ms. or Dr. Christy Brady is here with us tonight, who is before you uh, on a promotion from staff accountant to director of business services, as well as two of our recommendations and staff nurses who have been with us. Uh, and then our summer academy teachers, you'll see before you, are there for approval as well. And I believe that concludes the personnel section this evening. Thank you, Dr. Berg. Recommended action that the board approve the attached personnel changes as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved, Kramer. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. Do I have a second? Second, McVeigh. Thank you, Dr. McVeigh. Any questions regarding personnel? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. And welcome, Christine. Great Thank to you, have Dr. you on Garrett. board. 
All right, we're going to move to financial reports, uh, Mr. Tracy. Thank you, Dr. Garrett. Uh, this evening, we had the usual and customary monthly reports. Um, they are all attached to board docs. Uh, we begin with page two, the revenue summary report for the period ending April 30th. Uh, you can see at the tail end of that section, we have $39,513,191.52 invested. On page six, we have our expenditure summary report, which details our expenses and our budgetary format. On page 10, we have the food service profit and loss report. Uh, we had a monthly net income of a little over 18,000 with a year to date profit of 236,000. On page 12, we have our capital projects fund report. And that is uh, expenses and revenues related to the New Garden and Greenwood Elementary School construction projects. On page 13, we have the general operating bill list for the period of April 11th through this evening in the amount of $3,692,217.19 and additional payroll disbursements. Uh, our PNC procurement activity is listed on page 26 and 27. The board treasurer has been provided with a detailed report of procurement card activities. On page 28, we have the athletic fund bill list for the month of April, which represents payments for various officiating for our girls and boys athletic programs. On page 34, we have our internal service fund for our self-insured healthcare, medical prescription, and dental. On page 35, we have the capital reserve bill list. On page, um, what's the page? 35, I believe the capital projects bill list, uh, which represents our expenses for the new building program. On page 40, we have a very small interim real estate tax bill of $447.78. And finally, for this evening, we have an enrollment report for the month of April that represents uh, that we are up six students from the prior month, but it down 67 students over the prior year. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Tracy. <clears throat> the recommended action is that the board approve the financial reports. Do I have a motion? So moved, Finnegan. Thank you, Mr. Finnegan. Do I have a second? Kohler second. Thank you, Mr. Kohler. Any questions on the financial reports? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. All right, we're going to move on to the environmental science te textbook and Ms. Jester. Good evening, Dr. Blakey, Dr. Gert, and members of the school board. In accordance with board policy 108, adoption of textbooks, the following textbook is being recommended for board approval for our high school advanced placement environmental science course. The text, Environmental Science for the Advanced Placement Course by Freyland and Rayla, was selected by Mr. Michael Rapogel and two other members of the science department. It was chosen after the three staff members vetted several other texts and decided it was the best match for our students' needs. Their textbook selection form and the text itself have been available for review for the past two weeks at the district office. I present it now for your consideration and stand ready to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you. The recommended action is that the board approve the AP Environmental Science textbook, and that was, by the way, available for review at the district office. Do I have a motion? So moved, Perry. Thank you, Ms. Perry. Do I have a second? Second. second. I'll give that to Mr. Cronenberg. Thank you, Mr. Cronenberg. Any questions regarding the textbook? I have a question. I mean, we, we've approved many, many textbooks, you know, since I've been on the board. And you go through the rubrics, and then we pass them around the board. Most of us take them home and, and read them because we just can't sleep. Uh, and we always say that they're available for public review in a district office. Has anyone ever come in to look at the books, ever? If anyone can answer that question. I don't know if anyone came in the past two weeks. Um, Dr. Blakey, do you know if anyone has come in? No, uh, I only know of one time in the last few years where anyone's looked at books, but they were not ones that we were approving. They were ones that we were all currently using. There were a team of three or four individuals about two summers ago that asked to see all of our books. And we spent, uh, uh, Lydia Holman spent uh, an afternoon with them reviewing all our materials. But other than that, while they've been on display for board approval prior to board approval, not since I've been here now. 
Yeah, and the only reason I ask, I mean, there, there's obviously a lot of news lately about, you know, curriculums in schools, and the books are there. Anyone can come look at them. And I don't ever remember, Mr. Tracy, you've been around, you know, slightly longer than I have. Has anyone ever come to the district office to look at a book? And the public should. They're, they're there. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Yeah. So the question, I mean, if that's an option, um, how does someone go about doing that? If somebody wants to review the textbook, would they, who would they contact in order to do that? I would imagine they would contact uh, Mrs. Yang, uh, Dr. Blakey's secretary, and ask to come in and see the textbook. I believe that they would look at it at the, at the district office itself. They wouldn't take it off campus. Um, and they would also review the rubric that the teachers completed. Thank you. I did review the rubric, and I'm, I'm quite happy. You said there were multiple textbooks that were reviewed, and I did review the score sheet. Uh, I'm glad that it's being vetted in that, par in that manner. We ask that they, uh, the team complete at least three, that they look at at least three texts and complete the rubrics on those to make sure that this is really what they're happiest with. Thank you for the comments and questions, uh, board members. Any others? All right, hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The motion passes. Thank you, Ms. Jester. Thank you. Uh, we're going to move on to policy 218.1. Good evening again, Dr. Garrick, Dr. Blakey, members of the board. As uh, Mr. Kohler eloquently stated, we are here before you to present policy changes to policy 218.1, which is the weapons code policy. Sorry, I was looking at the paperwork. Okay. Um, the motion. Recommended action is that the board approve the above section of board policy and adopt it as policy, rescinding and declaring void all previous policies or portions thereof to the extent that they are inconsistent with this policy. Do I have a motion? Kohler, so moved. Thank you, Mr. Kohler. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Cronenberg. Any comments or questions regarding this policy 218.1? I would just like to bring up what I had mentioned during my report. Um, the, the balance of the conversation that we had was having a fair policy, but a reasonable policy that's going to keep our schools safe. Uh, the concern was that we don't ever want to be accused of arbitrarily enforcing a policy, right? Uh, one student treated unfairly. So that's why I had mentioned, Dr. Blakey, that if you could talk to law enforcement, this is not an easy uh, not to crack because what is a replica firearm? Is this putting my fingers up? I don't know if I'm in trouble now. I put my fingers up and made a gun, so is that a replica firearm? Uh, I don't think we want to go down that rabbit hole. And all I would just ask is if this policy is uh, passed, that you do some follow up on it, talk to law enforcement, and see what other school districts or other departments are doing to keep it uh, fair. Thank you. So I'll, I'll just say that I, um, Mr. Woolhoff and uh, Mr. McGuire meet with our law enforcement regularly, uh, at least once a month, whenever we have any uh, question about a weapon, replica, real, fake, whatever, uh, we contact law enforcement right away, and they are our guide through this whole process. Uh, the implementation of the policy is we try to keep it consistent, but you take into account um, you know, the age of the student and there are some other factors that are involved, but we are, um, safety is priority in job number one. And so the law, our law enforcement partners are there with us every step of the way during after, even if it's after school, not during school hours, if we find out about it, we contact law enforcement and they are our partners. We've, uh, uh, you know, the policy is, uh, really just giving us a, a little bit of discretion. It's not making major changes to the policy as a whole or the implementation of it. Thank you for that. Mr. Kramer, go ahead. Uh, and uh, I, I appreciate the discussion of the subtleties of this issue. Um, and as uh, Mr. Kohler has pointed out in the past, discretion as uh, one of the elements in, um, in the law um, and certainly in any kind of policing is a crucial factor. I'm quite uncomfortable with the board shall expel as language. Um, I think uh, in some sense, um, the, uh, the issue of discretion um, is particularly poignant to those who, who have to do enforcement. 
Uh, at one point, I will admit to having run a stop sign in Kennett Square Borough when I was a sitting borough, uh, borough council member. And I said to the chief afterwards, I did not get a ticket. And I said to the chief, maybe there should be a policy that takes the onus off of that police officer um, to uh, give me a ticket. And uh, that's analogous, I think, in some ways to saying to our administrators, look, we don't want to um, put the onus on you to be fair, so let's give you exact guidance. And what uh, Chief Holdsworth said, and I have a lot of respect for his opinion on this, was you never take away discretion. Even if you are risking unfairness in a decision, um, the importance of discretion is always there. So from my perspective, this uh, policy does not supply adequate discretion. And in fact, um, regardless of the fact that there is a loophole, more or less, and afterward, I think in some instances, in many instances, this would be interpreted by administrators to require um, immediate action of a kind that I think is much more appropriately done through discretion and uh, through consultation with the uh, fortunate um, the, the very fortunate relationships we have with law enforcement. Um, I would suggest that um, that shell could be amended to be um, in, analogously with the um, next policy could be amended to say may, and I don't think that that actually does much in terms of um, causing any consternation because the board is the body that's here and the board is the body that will be there, meaning the same body will continue to have this discretion. So I would um, suggest that that amendment be made. I could do that formally, but um, in, in absent that, I think uh, that this does, um, this policy as written, and I do know we're keeping a lot of language that has been there, I think it does make mischief. Thank you. Mr. Caller, can I defer to you, please? Mr. Culver, if I can help guide your attention to yeah. the top of page two, I believe that, Mr. Kramer, you're spot on with a recommendation for the policy that says the superintendent may recommend modifications of such expulsion requirement on a case-by-case -case basis, and that is amended from the previous language in the existing policy, which says shall be expelled. I'm sorry, I'm, the language I'm referencing is uh, just above that, at the bottom of the previous page. The board shall expel for a period of not less than one year any student who violates this weapons policy. I think um, we lose nothing in this instance by saying the board may expel. Um, I would just defer to the Commonwealth, Title 24, Section 13-1317.2 has that specific language, shall expel for one year. So the language that's in this policy is directly taken from the statute, and we do not have the authority to override the Commonwealth's legislature. Uh, if I can get this silly page to go down, I'll show you, Mr. Kramer. So this is the copy of the statute. Except as otherwise provided in this section, a school district or area career and technical school shall expel for a period of not less than one year. But that's where the, and I'm, I'm not gonna get too deep in the weeds on it, where you see except as otherwise provided in this section creates the caveat, and then the caveat follows on the next paragraph that says the superintendent may uh, modify this on a case-by-case -case basis. So uh, we must leave the language in there. We don't have any leeway to take that out because we don't override Pennsylvania statutes, but we do have the exceptions in there that grants right. the discretion so that we're not having a zero tolerance policy with, zero tolerance policies have their detractors and their their benefactors, their, their advocates. Uh, however, from a judicial standpoint, uh, many judges don't like it because then you have to enforce a policy that's just not, doesn't make any sense. So you take sense out of it. I think we have that in here with language as written. Okay, thank you, Mr. Culver, and thank you, for Dr. Barber, for that clarification. Any other comments or questions? Yeah, I just have a comment. Obviously, um, we read about these things, we see these things, and from a community, just as a member of the community and a member of a board, what I'm looking for and what I see is this school district um, tries to stay on top of all these things. I've been very impressed with like, how do we all gel together? How does um, our facilities team, our staff, our administrators, how do we, work in the policies, how do we have, re are we having real conversations about real policies for very real issues that have popped up in our community, uh, but certainly not as bad as we've seen in other school districts. And I'm pleased to see that we've got all the right players plugged in, everybody's working together and we're having an open dialogue. So 
appreciate everybody that's been a part of this and um, I'm glad to see the, the collaboration and the alignment. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. McVeigh. Yes, Mr. Cronenberg. I was just going to acknowledge that after every situation we debrief and debrief as a group, including the school or the, that the incident may have happened or uh, so we are constantly in contact with our law enforcement partners, with our school partners and reviewing uh, what happened. Could we do it differently? Could we do it better? The discipline uh, and, and how it's met uh, per the situation. So we're constantly trying to evolve and stay on top of things. And we can't do it without our partners. And we recognize that. Thank you. I want to second Dr. McFay's comments. I appreciate the leadership team that we have here at the district. Uh, I, I agree that we're on top of it as a district. We appear to be on top of it. Uh, I also want to second Mr. Kramer's comments. I, I share discomfort with the statutory language. I think I said that at the, at the policy committee meeting. Uh, I, I'm not going to add to that simply because we're required to follow the statutory language. But I, I do share some of that discomfort. I trust in our leadership team to take the necessary steps. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other comments or questions? Um, and I think I, I do know that language and there's some discussion about um, whether the stringency of statutory language in its completeness allows um, us to then um, have a, uh, while the board is still bound by the law, um, we, the, the policy um, could take care of some of the ambiguity by, I think, being less stringent. That's a whole other discussion that I think we've tried to have before. But what I'd rather, uh, I, there is another option, which I think is to ensure that the weapon terminology is defined. Um, that also is unfortunately statutory, but I think there actually is leeway there as well. Um, from my point of view, I think um, the recommendation that says that this uh, this policy does need review and does need to be very immediately um, uh, discussed in, in to, to ensure that um, this is not interpreted to be a new course of action here. Um, and I think, uh, you know, the legislative intent here, I think, through this discussion has been established, and I'd like that to be noted, that it is not our intention to strengthen those the, the policy and to, to change the way we have done business to this point in terms of that discretion. Instead, this is an emphasis on that discretion. So I appreciate the opportunity to put that on record, and I appreciate other members' comments, um, and, uh, and, and uh, second the call for some, uh, some feedback from the administration as to how to we will ensure that we don't get into the kind of circumstances that I know uh, none of us wants to, which is discipline, which is unjustified. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. I think those assurances are there in the paragraph that um, Dr. Barber read, that we know that assurance is there on behalf of our administration superintendent. Okay, any other comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Policy 227, Dr. Barber. Thank you again. As uh, Mr. Kohler stated, the policy committee is recommending changes to policy 227, the controlled substances and paraphernalia policy. Uh, in addition, along similar lines, we reviewed uh, specific language pertaining to this policy, made updates, and are providing the superintendent with the discretion needed to apply this policy uh, in accordance with uh, applicable law and the instances that are occurring within our school district. Thank you. The recommended action that the board approve the above section of board policy and adopt it as policy, rescinding and declaring void all previous policies or portions thereof to the extent that they are inconsistent with this policy. Do I have a motion? So moved, Kramer. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. A second? Second, Finnegan. Thank you, Mr. Finnegan. Any questions or comments regarding this? I would just say since I jumped in there to make the motion, I'll jump in there to make my comment. This is an example of um, exactly what, what we were talking about in the previous um, uh, instance. This is, I think, actually extremely well done in terms of um, uh, ensuring uh, discretion and appropriate discretion. There's a little more leeway, I think, in the, in the statute, but I think this was actually really thoughtfully uh, done, so I appreciate those who worked on making sure that this accurately reflects the intent to provide discretion to our administrators. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Approved. Abstentions, the motion passes. Dr. Barber, waiver agreement? 
Sure, this evening we are requesting uh, from the board an agreement um, between the Kennett Consolidated School District and a family uh, regarding a waiver uh, that was provided to the board in executive content. Thank you. The recommended action is that the board approve the waiver agreement with the parents of a student. Do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Cronenberg. A second? Second, Kramer. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions, the motion passes. Dr. Barber, separation agreement. Thank you again. Uh, this evening for review and approval with the board is a separation agreement between the Kennett Consolidated School District and a, an employee of the school district. Unfortunately, I'm not able to answer any questions uh, due to the confidential nature of this agreement. Thank you. The recommended action that the board approve the separation agreement in general lease between the Kennett Consolidated School District and employee number 7454, providing for an irrevocable resignation dated June 30, 2023. Do I have a motion? So moved. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Second. Fagan. A second? Mr. Who gave the, Mr. Cronenberg, thank you. Um, we're going to move right to a vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The motion passes. All right, we're going to go to the resignation election of assistant secretary. So um, we basically currently have Mr. Cronenberg as the assistant secretary. As vice president, he cannot hold that position as well. So they, we have a recommended um, action that the board accept the resignation of David Cronenberg as the assistant secretary of the County Consolidated School District and that Jeffrey McVeigh be elected assistant secretary of the County Consolidated School District to fulfill the unexpired term from May 8, 2023, ending June 30, 2025. Do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Cronenberg. Do I have a second? Second, to Thank Kramer. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. Okay, any discussion on that? Any questions? I want to thank Mr. McVay for stepping up. Thank you for that too, Dr. McVay. All right. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The motion passes. Mr. Tracy, design development of Greenwood Elementary School. Sort of a little deja vu here, you know, about two months later, if we approve the new garden design development, we are here this evening presenting Greenwood design development. I hope all the board members and audience in attendance had the opportunity to review our presentation uh, that was held at the April 3rd Finance Committee meeting. We also took the show on the road to Greenwood Elementary School for their PTO on April 11th. Uh, the culmination of all of Breslin, Dewey, the board, the input of our faculty uh, resulted in a 105,700 square foot building to be exact. Uh, it's designed for a PDE capacity of 750. That would be 25 students per classroom, so 30 classrooms. It's our capacity of about 660 uh, with a cost estimate of a little over 56 million. It is when, within our budgetary parameters. Uh, I would like uh, to invite all the board to the next finance committee meeting in June where we'll be reviewing the cost estimate for Greenwood in greater detail. Um, all the documents uh, are available on our website under building your buildings for the future, as well as attached to board docs this evening. Thank you, Mr. Tracy. The recommended action is that the board approve the design development plan for Greenwood Elementary School as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Finnegan. Second? Second. Thank McVay. you, Dr. McVeigh. All right, any questions or comments before the vote? Uh, I continue to believe that the best option is to stagger the buildings. I believe that's the case even despite the fact that there has been a revenue increase, uh, at least that we hope there is one. So I will be voting no uh, for that reason. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. Any uh, other comments? Yes. The sir. only comment I'll make is, is kind of the same line with the one with the um, review in the textbooks is that we, we do these road shows, we do these finance meetings, we've been doing them for close to a year. There have been presentations, there have been webinars, there have been documents on the website, and we get, there's been dedicated email addresses for questions. We get very few questions from the public. We had a half dozen people who weren't staff show up, or weren't PTO, sorry, show up at Greenwood. So um, I, I hope it's just because they trust us, um, but I really wish to be more involvement with the community because uh, these are very long and very detailed processes that we go into with great detail uh, at, at finance meeting after finance meeting. And um, 
you know, I just wish more people would take more of an interest. Thank you for that comment. Any others? I, I would just like to comment that uh, we began this journey, and I'll call it a journey because we've been in this for a little over a year and a half now, talking about this and working towards it. And at the outset, we crossed the divide where we weighed the cost benefit of improving and or renovating the current buildings versus the new buildings. We looked at the head counts that we're looking at in the future. So we've kind of gone through, we've gone through many cycles in this and we came to the position where we needed to have the new buildings addressing the, the staggering of it. My biggest concern if we were to do that is the inflationary times that we're in. Our costs of building this are going to increase dramatically as time goes on. Uh, every 6%, 8% compounded over another few years, we could potentially have a much more expensive building uh, as opposed to putting our ducks in a row now. And I do feel comfortable that we've been doing that. We've had many different presentations from Mr. Tracy analyzing the costs. Uh, so I feel comfortable with moving forward. I realize it's this is a lot of money and it's it's not going to be paid off right away. But I do realize that this is for the long term, and the, both of the buildings that we're dealing with replacing were built during the Kennedy administration, and we need to expand for the incoming population increases and in the changes in technology and not throw good money after bad. Thank you. Any other comments? I just wanted to respond to Mr. Finnegan's comment about the involvement of the community. So on my walk here, I did... Um, meet a family um, who stopped me and said, are they building a new <laughs> elementary school? And I think we do have to respect that people are busy and they may have seen something. Um, I think that the way people are reached now has changed. And so that may be something that we want to revisit with the communications committee or in some other way. How do families receive information now and how can we get them more um, informed and sooner. Thank you all for your comments. Um, any others at this point? All right, hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, uh, roll call, please. For uh, the vote, do you have it? Do we don't have to do that officially? Okay, all right, thank you. So the motion does pass. All right, we're going to move on to change orders with uh, Mr. Tracy. Uh, keeping in line with our construction projects, uh, the next motion really is just a little bit of fiscal controls that we're putting in place to ensure that the board is aware of any project escalation. At the same time, we're ensuring that the project does not get stalled or delayed. As you know, we're under very tight timelines. Uh, for anyone that is not aware that we are building two new schools, uh, they're going to start seeing evidence in about eight months at New Garden and then about six months later at Greenwood. So the purpose of this really, and we're implementing it now because those who have gone past legacy fields suddenly realize that 100% of the synthetic turf is already gone. Uh, that's about a $1.9 million project that was authorized by this board. And under state law, you approve a bid, that bid number is exact. Any alterations, deletions, that must come forward as a change order. Uh, this motion will allow myself, myself and the superintendent, and ultimately the board at different, different thresholds to keep the projects moving. So there is a zero to 10,000 that would allow me to authorize a change order. Even at that point, at the subsequent meeting, the board will be asked to approve that change order and there'll be detail provided. Then we go at 10,000, 25,000, that between Dr. Blakey and myself, we can make that authorization. And then finally, anything over 25,000 will be presented to the board prior to us actually executing that change order. Uh, there will be multiple change orders throughout the project, although we try to minimize it. Um, they will be vetted through our architects, through Dewey Engineering, our construction manager, through our own team of Mr. Wolhoff and myself, before we actually agree to any change orders to proceed. Thank you, Mr. Tracy. <clears throat> the recommended action is that the board approve the change order protocol as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved, Kohler. Thank you, Mr. Kohler. Second? Uh, second, Kramer. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. Any discussion on this? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The motion passes. Mr. Tracy, Geotechnical Investigation Professional Services. 
Thank you, Dr. Garrett. I hope all the board members had an opportunity to review the 20-page tax document to the contract. <laughs> um, this provides us with independent testing. Uh, Mr. Wolhoff mentioned in his report we're already doing some geotechnical testing for the on-site septic. Uh, there'll be a lot of bore samples and testing uh, for the foundations of the building forthcoming. That is the first wave of the 50,000. And then once construction commences, there is a constant check and balance between this third party um, geotechnical, the contractor. So before we actually pour cement, they'll do slump testing. Before we actually put up steel, they'll ensure that the foundations meet our specifications. You'll see another contract just like this for Greenwood uh, in a few months. This has been uh, RFP'd out through Dewey Engineer, so we just didn't go out there and pick Kleinfelder. Uh, we actually solicited a uh, request for proposals for a, a very detailed scope of services. Okay, the recommended action that the board award the geotechnical investigation and construction testing and special inspection services to Kleinfelder Inc. as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Finnegan. A second? Second, Kramer. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. Any questions or comments for Mr. Tracy? Um, Mr. Tracy, is, is the uh, intent going to be to go out to RFP again or just use the same geotech company? since it's such a short duration. No, we'll go out to RFP again. Uh, for example, we have two traffic engineers separate and distinct of each other. So we'll actually issue an RFP out in about six months for Greenwood. Any other comments, questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Student Transportation Services Agreement Addendum, Mr. Tracy. Unrelated to construction uh, this evening to help thwart to the shortage of bus drivers. So we have been negotiating with Grant Bus Company uh, to offer all of our bus drivers and van drivers a $2 an hour increase direct pass through. So that means there's no management administration overhead fees attached to that. It equates to about $2.40 per hour with payroll taxes. Um, the rates that are included in the attachment represent that. So it is an addendum to our five-year agreement uh, that will be effective May 1st. Our goal was to let the drivers know their appreciated work on the retainment, the recruitment, and rewarding of our current drivers. And hopefully when we open up school in August, uh, we'll have a few more of those positions filled. Um, it is in response to many districts who are putting this out there right now. This will push our driver wage into about the $23 an hour range. Okay, the recommended action that the board approve the addendum with Kraft. Do I have a motion? So moved, Finnegan. Thank you. Second? Second, Kramer. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. Any questions for Mr. Tracy on this item? I just hope it's successful. I know that um, what you mentioned at the end there, that other districts were raising their rates. So the few drivers that we have, which right now is in sufficient numbers, um, we're going to jump ship and go somewhere else. So. Uh, hopefully we can retain them, attract some new ones, or we're all going to wind up getting CDL licenses. Well said, Mr. Fitting. And we are, we are sort of playing a catch-22 with other districts. Um, you know, we actually initiated a $1 raise uh, with the inaugural year of this contract. Uh, it, it made really no dent in, in the progress of, of recruiting new drivers. Uh, eventually, we're going to find that sweet spot rather than just throw, you know, additional dollars. Um, working with uh, Downingtown and Westchester, it seemed like $2 was an adequate increase. Uh, we'll know next year. I may be back to you. I may not be. But, uh, you know, we're, we're eventually going to have to fill the voids. We're running about 56 routes a day. We're probably short about 10 drivers on any given day. Um, I think it's an appropriate uh, uh, step to take in terms of the kind of practicalities of this. I also think it gives us an opportunity to express real appreciation for those people who are driving. It makes it incredibly stressful to know that you don't have much backup. Um, our drivers are um, often really extraordinary members of our community who are fully connected to our uh, students. And I think um, one of the, the, uh, the the important messages that this that I intend to send, and I think this board as a whole and this administration intends to send, is that educators uh, as a group, that includes everyone who works to welcome, works to address the needs of, works to ensure that our children are ready to learn. And I think um, it can't be overstated. Driving a bus is a very stressful job. Um, 
certainly my son's bus driver, he now walks to, to the high school, but uh, his bus driver, uh, Frank, was one of, uh, one of the really extraordinary members of this community anyway, but also took care of my son. And that has been true across the, uh, across the years. Um, those people who drive these buses, they are members of our team. And I, I think it's worth noting that this is not just about dollars and cents, that we also need to show our appreciation for those people who make sure that our students come to school on time, um, but also come come ready to learn, come welcomed, and come to a community that cares about them. And they should know that as soon as they get on the bus, and they do. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The motion passes. The uh, next item on the agenda is a notice of intent to reelect the district superintendent. The board is contractually obligated to provide Dr. Blakey, our superintendent, of its intent to renew his contract that expires the end of June, 2024. The recommended action, that the board approve the motion declaring the intent of the board of school directors of the Kenneth Consolidated School District to renew the contract of Dr. Dolan Dusty Blakey as district superintendent and to reelect him to that position. A contract will be negotiated between Dr. Blakey and the board with a re-election expected to occur at the regular board meeting scheduled for July 10, 2023. Do I have a motion? So move, Kohler. Thank you, Mr. Kohler. A second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Cronenberg. We go right to a vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The motion passes. Dr. Blakey. Congratulations on behalf of the board. So I do have a little something I want to oh, no. just share. So when Dr. Blakey began our, as our superintendent in January 2020, who could have known that two months later we would be in the COVID-19 crisis? Along with our dedicated administrators and staff, he guided us through a challenging time ensuring that the educational experiences of all students remained at the forefront, even amidst the stops and starts of in-person in -person school. Two years later, we are finally able to move forward. He has established a path for us with initiatives that provide our students with the knowledge and skills they need to be prepared for the critical challenges and 21st century careers that lie ahead of them. These include the strategic plan that is definitive in the goals, objectives, outcomes, and accountability measures for our district and schools, and that address the needs of all of our students. Promoting and supporting the newly designed pathway programs at Kennett High School that give purpose to the required and elective courses our students take. Addressing the K-12 curriculum by keeping materials relevant and by supporting the necessary improvements that keep our facilities relevant as well, especially with the proposed new elementary school buildings for Greenwood and New Garden. Dr. Blakey, the board thanks you, supports you, and looks forward to your continued leadership in moving Kennett Consolidated School District forward. Thank you, Dr. Garrett um, and fellow board members. Uh, this is impossible without your support and the support of the community, but most importantly, the hard work and dedication of our staff and our teachers. Um, they are the ones who make a difference every day in the lives of our kids. Um, all staff, as Mr. Kramer said, um, and you know, it's my honor and privilege to work with them every day and get the work done. Uh, the work is hard. The work is often um, selfless, and we ask a lot of our employees, and they deliver every day. So I would just like to say thank you to all of them and that this success is really a, a product of their work and their hard work. And to our administrators in the audience as well, thank you very much for what you do every day. You make a difference and you lead the way and I'm just part of the team, so thank you. So these contracts are extremely important, so we say congratulations to you. Okay, we're going to move on to another contract. We have a contract renewal for our Chief Financial Officer, uh, Mr. Mark Tracy. 
So his contract expires uh, this June of 2023. And the board had a small committee that came together to review his contract and uh, make suggestions and changes to Mr. Tracy. The board has reviewed that contract and we are now here uh, to recommend action on that contract approval. That the board approve the contract for Mr. Mark Tracy, Chief Financial Officer for the Kenna Consolidated School District. The contract renews the Chief Financial Officer's services to KCSD for a five-year term beginning July 1, 2023 and ending June 30, 2028. Do I have a motion? So moved, Kramer. Second. Second, Second Finnegan. We go right to a vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Congratulations to you, Mr. Tracy. Do you want to say anything? <laughs> I'm never short on words. <laughs> I really would like to echo what Dr. Blakey mentioned. I mean, it is a collaborative team effort um, and representing the operational support side. Ms. Schaefer, Mr. Wolhoff, Mr. McGuire, Mr. Jenkins, who runs transportation, Mr. Hwang, who runs our cafeteria operations. Uh, I think we're all honored to serve. Uh, I've had a long-term career uh, at Kennett. I am hopeful that this will be my last contract uh, with Kennett, um, but it has really been truly a pleasure over the last 22 years working with outstanding board members and community members that really put the students and the focus of the district first. So thank you for that. Thank you. And Mr. Finnegan has a few words. Thank you, Dr. Garrett. And I know since the uh, public and, and, um, and Mr. Kohler were denied hearing my finance report this week, um, <laughs> I, I, I get to speak now. Uh, so, Mark, on behalf of the board, congratulations on the renewal of your sixth contract with our school district. And for the public, Mr. Tracy started his journey at KCSD on October 1st, 2001. Over the past 22 years, he has worked with three superintendents, dozens of board members, yet only three finance committee chairs, Skip Reynolds, Maureen Harrigan, and myself, Michael Finnegan, contributing to the stability and continuity of handling financial matters at KCSD. During his time at KCSD, Mark has experienced the building of Kennett Middle School, Kennett High School renovations, Kennett High School Stadium and Lights, Legacy Field, Bancroft Elementary School, and the Mary D. Lang Kindergarten Center conversion. He's now ready to build the new New Garden and Greenwood Elementary Schools. He's also spearheaded initiatives to subcontract student transportation, food services, paraprofessionals, and self-insured medical programs, all saving the district millions. His department has been the recipient of the Certificate of Excellence in Finance Reporting from the Government Finance Officers Association and Association of Business Offices International every year since 2011 and has 20 years of unmodified clean audits for local independent audits, Pennsylvania Office of Auditors General and federal program audits. Mark, we look forward to the continuation of your work for the next five years, and most importantly, you and your team spearheading the construction of our two new elementary schools. Thank you again, Mark. Congratulations. I, I just don't feel that old. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just wanted to mention, um, I appreciate um, both of you for your comments. Um, it's important that in matters of uh, contracts and employment, um, we're, we, uh, we make sure that we uh, uh, make our comments clear. But I want to uh, say on behalf of the board, thanks to both of you. Your comments accurately reflect my feelings on the subject for both of our our, uh, our administrators, and um, congratulations to both of you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. Okay. We are going to move to, uh, oh, any um, public comment to address items not on the agenda, Mr. Tracy? Okay. All right. We are going to move to calendar of events. So be, uh, one thing I'd like to remind the board, if you haven't already, if you could please, if your calendar uh, works out that you can do this on Friday. If you can sign up to be at one of our schools, it would be fantastic. And the sign up is um, available on Dr. Blakey's uh, Friday report, if you could do that. Um, on Monday, May 22nd, will it be our policy committee at six, our curriculum committee meeting at 6.30. On Monday the 29th, the district is closed. Now on Tuesday, May 30, Technical High School Penix Bridge graduation is going to be held at Oxford High School because they have an auditorium and the tech school does not. It'll be at 7 p.m. 
I cannot be there because I will be overseas. Uh, Mr. Finnegan does plan to go, but frankly, if you can go, the students really appreciate it because you are acknowledged. Um, and our students, the majority of our students go to that campus um, and they really would appreciate you being there if your schedule allows. On Monday, June 5th, communications committee meets at six, finance committee meets at seven. On Monday, June 12th, our school board meeting is at 7 p.m. Time is really moving quick. Uh, we held an executive session on April 17th, 2023. At 6.04 p.m. we began and we ended at 8.04 p.m. and it was around legal and personnel matters. Any other items that anyone wants to share? Any further business? Dr. Garrett, I note that in addition to the calendar items you just shared, that the district calendar is chock full of items as we come towards the end of the year that I would invite all community members to join us including uh, June 9th, I believe there's a relatively significant, I <laughs> a relatively oh, significant so calendar. Right. Graduation is right. at Kennedy High School, and please Thank you. join us for graduation if you are able to do so. <laughs> Secondly, uh, I note a couple of unfamiliar faces in the audience, and I would like to recognize any new employees of the Kennedy Consolidated School District that may be in the audience tonight. Welcome. We're glad to have you with us, and thank you for being here at this board meeting. Thank you, Dr. Gary. Thanks, and you just reminded me too. Uh, if any board members uh, can go, KEF is having uh, a little get together uh, for our employees on Thursday at uh, Braylock. And if you can get there, I believe it's from three to five. So um, just even if you just drop by for a few minutes. I believe that covers a lot. And how could I forget June 9th? My grandson's graduating, but I mean, where did I, where's my mind? Um, I have one thing I'd like to add. Yes. I know that we're long on the meeting, and but I think this is important. During Teacher Appreciation Week, uh, Staff Appreciation Week, I'm going to steal the words from the Daily Local article, which was run in Prep Live. Uh, Mr. Regal was here earlier, but he left, and I wanted to basically say this with him present. Uh, our own Kevin Regal was voted as Coach of the Year, and I'm going to read this from Prep Live, uh, re reprinted from the Daily Local News. When Kevin Regal took over at Kennett in 2017, his squad finished winless in the Chessmont American Division and one in nine overall. Six years later, all eight of his entrants qualified for regionals. Six, Zach Jaffe, Blake Boyer, Ken Langle, Kane Langle, Josh Barlow, uh, John Pardo, and Bailey Schindel advanced to the states, breaking the program record set the season prior of four. Uh, Kennett up and down the dual season went eight and four, four and one in the division. Uh, quite an accomplishment for in the last six years, what Mr. Regal has done for our wrestling program uh, and a well-deserved award on his part being coach of the year. Great. Thank you for pointing that out. Congratulations to Mr. Regal. And, and I would you, add, if I may, um, and I think that's um, uh, to, to build on that, I think over time, we have had such a series of extraordinary young people attend this uh, program. And I thank everyone who arranges for those spotlights. Um, and tonight was no exception. Um, I think the, the young man who, in fact, was, was not acknowledged as the hero tonight, but who showed enormous presence of mind and showed the power of a powerful family, uh, I think that was extremely uh, evident. Um, but I think our extraordinary public professional educators are people who um, their their accomplishments are always reflected in speeches by two young women on who I think we're extraordinarily um, poised and, and thoughtful and uh, and are not just future farmers of America but the future of America so it really is extraordinary to continue to to see a stream of young people come through here reflecting the values uh, the knowledge the expertise the commitment uh, the love that our students um, receive from our extraordinary professional educators. And I also echo the, echo the thanks um, that uh, we've all certainly feel deeply for, for our teachers. Thank you. Great. Anything else? Are we sure? <laughs> okay, the meeting is adjourned, 827. Thank you all.